about standard operating procedures. So this may sound really dumb, um, but at some point you've probably had rough version written something like a standard operating procedure. Um, standard operating procedures are commonly refer referred to as SOPs. Um, so SOPs are basically just a document that describes how we want something done. So how um, a certain chain of events makes something happen. Um, so we want to, we have these SOPs because there's a certain work or job in order or in order to do something in to ensure quality. So we're looking for a quality of job. Um, so if you've ever worked in fast food, believe it or not, you've probably read an SOP of how they want a sandwich put together or how they want, um, you know, salads put together or how they want um, people greeted in a, dri a drive through um, Any, any company has an SOP. They have a way they want things done. So it might not just be for fast food, but I know Charles River has SOPs. Veterinary clinics have SOPs. Um, any type of cleaning is an SOP. They want certain things done a certain way, things you do first. We have SOPs in this class. You guys just don't know it. Um, so there's a lot of good things about SOPs. Um, it's a set of instructions, basically, um, systems or procedures or a step that is written down in order to which we want individuals to follow to complete a job safely and the right way. Um, it max maximizes um, production, so that means that everybody's doing it the same and everybody's doing it right. Um, and we want to make sure that everything's done um, correctly and the same, so it's just like this says. So um, SOP example, uh, I have a specific way that I want you guys to clean the kennels. I have a specific way I want you guys to feed certain animals. Um, I have, um, at my house, I have a specific way I like things done. And so like, if I have a house sitter, I leave her basically, I mean, I leave her a set of instructions of how I feed the dogs. So that way it's their routine, they're used to it. Um, I always tell them, I was like, feed them first before you eat, otherwise they won't leave you alone. And that's not so much like a a thing for their safety. It's so that I don't have to have my dog in my face while I'm eating dinner. If I feed my dogs before I eat dinner, they go lay down because they've already been fed. If I try to eat before I feed them, they're in my face and they're like, hey mom, I'm hungry, yo, feed me, where's my food? Um, you guys may have written an SOP for somebody before for something that um, you wanted done, maybe uh, doing something in your car. Uh, there's SO I mean, SOPs can be changing oil, changing a tire. There's a certain way we need to do it and do it right and safely so that it gets done correctly. And you know, 10 miles down the road, your tire's not bouncing in the other direction and you're sitting like this in your car wondering what the heck happened. Um, so an SOP should be available at the uh, place of work uh, where it's performed. So wherever that um, thing is being performed, there should be an SOP available for it. Um, the original should be kept in a secured place. Um, and then you can also give out copies to people. Sometimes like at our, at our clinic, you get a book, um, and it's got all the standard operating procedures for everything at our clinic. So you have that book to refer to. There's one in the front office. Um, and then there's also, if there's certain things that we want done, they're posted on the wall. So they're posted on the walls of places like how to, how to run a, how to run a fecal, how to start the progesterone machine, how to take an x-ray, how to set up the x-ray machine. I mean, those are all posted on the walls in case you forget, you can refer to them. Um, but in our training books, we have to, you have to sign and then the, your supervisor has to sign saying that they showed you how or saw you do it or un that you understand the process. So there's two types of SOPs. There's a technical SOP, which is more for um, like, how to do something, so like technical activities, for example, how to collect a stool sample, how to run a fecal float, how to, um, how to uh, clean, clean something along those lines, or how to fix you know, an engine, something along those lines. Administrative SOPs are more for um, highlights on an administrative process, um, maybe how to review a contract, how they want that done, um, how to determine organizational training needs, so things like that. Um, those are more like directions on an admin level versus a technical level. Um, for our portion of this, we're only going to fart, fart, <laughs> focus on technical SOP. So we're going to look at um, giving somebody directions on how to do something. So um, the technical SOP format can differ depending on, depending on where you work, but um, there's a lot of things that are very similar in them. The format and length of the SOP are going to depend on how many steps are taken um, to describe the procedures of work. If you are writing an SOP on how to, how to run the autoclave, 
it might be shorter than an SOP on how to do a fecal float. Does that make sense? You're in a lot more steps in your fecal float than you have on starting the autoclave. Or um, the format of an SOP of how to change the big fish filter is going to be a lot longer. There's a lot more steps in that than maybe how to just feed the fish. I mean, there's, it depends on your complex or your simplicity of it. Um, we want, um, it can be a simple one page um, hierarchical steps. So the, I mean, hierarchical means just like what comes first, what comes second, what comes third. Um, it can be graphic. So I know a lot of places um, have graphic pictures, like fast food ones are a good one for that. They have pictures of how they want the sandwich put together. Then there's words beside it also. So you can have both of those or even like a flow chart. Cause sometimes there might be, if this happens, you need to do this. Or if this happens, you should go here. So those flow, you can do flow charts for certain things to um, take people in certain steps, depending on where you want them to go. Um, any organization is gonna have its own format of SOPs. I mean, you're just gonna follow the format for that organization when you're writing one. Um, they can be written by individuals or a team. Um, and it might be something along the lines of shutting down an operation, um, repairing a faulty electrical circuit, um, building a new machine. So if you're building something, putting something together, um, basic milking process, these are all things that can, they are, there can be SOPs for. Um, but who should write the SOP? Well, first off, it needs to be somebody who knows how to do that job well and who knows how to do it right. I'm not gonna take the kid who's been on my staff for a week and be like, hey, write an SOP for this machine. And they're like, I've never ran that or I've only ran that once. Not a good person to write an SOP. It needs to be somebody um, who has performed the job, knows how to do the job, knows how to do it right. Um, or if it's a team of people, you want it to be that team of people that work together on a job because maybe, they, maybe some person has a little bit um, easier way of explaining it, or maybe there's a step that can be combined into two sentences or some, or into one sentence or something like that. Um, it could be any, it's going to be anybody, whoever it is, it's going to be somebody that's um, related with the task. Um, good people to do this are maybe people who supervise the other people doing the job because they know hundred percent how it's supposed to be done. Or if you have a safety officer or a health officer, those are good people to do it. And then you can actually hire technical writers to write your SOP too. Um, SOP is useful for the person who will be performing a job, um, such as a manager, an engineer, whoever it is. Um, so that way that they know how to do it. And it's great for the training process. How nice is it is when I, is when I can hand you a, a piece of paper and it's got just a bullet pointed piece of paper and this is how it's done. Or you can look at a, a slideshow like this and I was like, this is exactly how it's done. We're giving directions, simple directions on how to do something. And then I don't have to tell you every time you have a question because you can refer to that SOP. So instead of coming to me and saying, Miss Lighty, I forget how to do blah, blah, blah. There's a sheet for it that says, this is how it's done. And you have that sheet, you can refer to that first. And then if you have a question, then you can come talk to me. Um, so when do we write an SOP and when do we test the SOP? Well, first you have to write the SOP. So we need to write it and test it before we even give it out. So when we write SOPs at my office, if a person writes them, that person gives them to another person. And they say, do this exactly as written and then come back and tell me what you think. So if I wrote an SOP, let's say for how to, um, how to clean the autoclave. Um, cleaning the autoclave is pretty simple, but I wrote an, I read an SOP for it. I hand it to somebody who did not help me write the SOP and I say, hey, do this exactly as it says and then come back to me and tell me what you think. They might do that and they might come back to me and say, hey, you forgot about, you know, taking the, the shelves out and, and rubbing and wiping them down. Or um, you forgot you, you forgot to say that you should, that you have to tip the autoclave forward to make sure that you get all of the water out of the tank. And I'll be like, oh yeah, you're right. That's a good idea. Um, and it might've been something maybe that I would have assumed somebody knew, but the, the person might point out something. So um, you want to test it then and then revise it after it's been tried and then uh, try it again, revise it again and so on and so forth until you think it's perfect. Um, and then if there's any time that the equipment might change or you maybe get a better way to do something or there might be an update in software, you need to revise your um, SOP or possibly even rewrite re -write it if it's a completely new piece of equipment. I can't use, if I have an M11 autoclave, autoclave and we upgrade to an M14, the process is probably gonna be a little different and so I'm gonna have to maybe rewrite or edit my SOP. Um, Maybe sometimes we have, might have new information, like we go to continuing education um, and we find out there's a better way to do ear cytologies 
We're going to rewrite how we do our SOPs because there's new information that suggests better performance of doing them. Um, we always want to keep it regularly updated. So this is a very this is a pretty complex SOP, but it's it's really good to um, look at something like this because you're going to see something like this if you go work at Charles River. Um, our SOPs at the vet clinic are not near this um, complex. We do have um, a title for the procedure name. We say who wrote it and who reviewed it, um, and then a supervisor uh, is approved, and we do have dates for those. Um, and it does explain what um, the policy, the purpose, the scope, the responsibilities. I mean, it does kind of explain this. But um, ours are much more simplified. This is more a professional one, but it talks about like what is the mission or standard procedure for that this must meet. So the policy might be um, changing the water in the M11 autoclave. The purpose is the rationale of this procedure is um, monthly, ma monthly maintenance to ensure uh, cleanliness of water in the autoclave. Um, and then what areas of the company are affected by this procedure? So just say, um, persons who operate the M11 autoclave. I mean, you don't have to get super detailed responsibilities. So people that might do this would be like, probably it's gonna be technicians. So um, RVTs and assistants are gonna be the ones that are gonna be doing this. Um, and then if there's any definitions in here or words that people might not understand, you can put those in there. But most of the time in our clinic, everybody, we're not using big words and there's not any definitions. And then you just literally start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you just write your, you just do your procedure. Um, when you're writing an SOP, we want to make sure that number one, we're using short sentences. Do not write huge paragraphs. Short, concise, detailed sentences. Um, the longer things are, the, lo the longer things are, it's harder to understand. Um, and you, if you include more than one step, um, they might skip something. So each step should be individual. I'd rather have 17 steps to do something then one big paragraph 17 steps to do something i can quickly write read through it or maybe if i was like it, it might be easier to adjust if i have a big paragraph i'm going to rewrite that paragraph where if i have a bunch of steps it's easy just to insert a step somewhere if i need to change something um we want to use imperative so um we want to it's more like com commands like take trays out of autoclave then instead of you should take the trays out of the autoclave Take trays out of autoclave. That's all you need to do. Um, so passive, um, so this is a passive sentence. The weight of feed refusal, refusal should be recorded in the feeder notebook. Imperative is record the weight of feed refusals in the feeder notebook. So you guys see it just shortens that sentence and it's more of a command instead of like direction. So we want to do this more of like a command um, that keeps things a lot shorter. They should be concise. So again, we want short sentences, few as possible. Try not to give a crap ton of details if they don't need it. Keep it short and simple. Um, so if you guys want, you can practice these. Um, there are sentences here. So this first one is add one quarter cup of coffee grounds into the filler and place back into the coffee maker. Fill the coffee pot with water, then pour, the top, pour into the top of the coffee maker. Obviously, that's a lot. This should be broken down more. And this is a lot, this can be concise more. Um, for number two, take a small collection device outside with the animal. When the animal starts to urinate, wait three seconds and then place the collection device in the stream to collect the urine. Again, take the small collection device outside with the animal. I mean, that, that should be a step there and then the rest of this can follow. Um, but I wouldn't even use take. I would, I would be, I would just say, um, I would even shorten this even more somehow. Like, um, you know, use small collection vice to collect urine. I mean, obviously you need to take it outside. So, and there's again, down here we have one. So um, just, you can practice these, but draw five mLs of blood and place it into the two tubes. Draw five mLs of blood. Place in red top tubes. Write on tubes, write what on tubes? Label tubes with name, patient's name, owner's name and date. Spin one tube for the CBC machine and place the other tubes on, in the chemistry machine. Spin which one? Place which tube in the chemistry machine? Where's the chemistry machine? What do I spin it with? Do I spin it in a circle? Spin in my tube? No. You need to put, say, place red top tube in the centrifuge and spin for 10 minutes. And then you need to tell me what to do with the other tube for the chemistry machine. Like, you know, place other tube in surgery suite with chemistry machine. 
and then that you're going to run them together or something like that. I mean, this is not detailed enough, and this needs broken down more, so hopefully you guys can kind of see that. So, this is a really good um, example. So, how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Put peanut butter on bread. Put jelly on bread. Eat. Put peanut butter on which side of the bread? Do I want it on a plate, or do I just want it left on the counter? I mean, depending on where you're making my peanut butter and jelly, I don't want it on the counter. I want you to put it on a plate. Um, how much peanut butter? How much jelly? If I'm putting the peanut butter on the bread, do I want to just scoop my hand there and slap it onto the bread? No, I want you to use a knife. Don't put your hand in the peanut butter jar. That's gross. So we want to so think about this when you're doing this, and we want you to create a procedure, and we want you to use detail. So this is a great way here. Put two slices of bread on a place. Open the jar of peanut butter and use a butter knife to spread two tablespoons of peanut butter onto one slice of bread. Open the jar of jelly and use a butter knife to spread two tablespoons of jelly on the other side of the bread. Put the two slices together with the peanut butter and jelly in the middle and then eat. So it's not a ton of detail, but it explains exactly what you want done. So this is a good SOP. This is a bad SOP. So your challenge this week, this is your assignment. You get to write an SOP. I don't care what it's for. You can pick anything in the world you want. If you want it to be animal related, it can. If you want it to be um, food related, I don't care. You need to pick an SOP for something that you know how to do well. Um, it can be how you want your shirt folded. It can be how you do laundry at your house. It can be um, something you learned how to do in lab. It can be caring for one of the animals here, feeding something. Um, it can be, uh, you can give me an SOP procedure for something maybe that you do in a sport. Um, maybe how how to shoot a layup or how to um, you know how to do a certain warm up. I don't care what you do. Pick something that you want to do. Make it fun. You can do it. You can do it on how to make a sandwich. You can do it on how to make an ice cream sundae. I don't care. What I want you to do is I want you to write your SOP. Then you are going to give your SOP to a friend or a family member. And you are going to ask them to perform that SOP as written. So exactly as written. So if your SOP looks like this, they can put the peanut butter on the, butter on the bread however they want. They don't have to do anything. They tell them they have to follow it exactly. They're not allowed to ask you questions. They have to follow it exactly. And then see if they did it right. If they didn't do it right, then you can edit, then you need to edit your SOP. So I want you to do that. So you're gonna write your SOP have them do it, and then you're gonna tell me how it turned out. Did it turn out well? Did it not turn out well? If it didn't turn out well, what did you need to do better? If it turned out well, well, great. Could you have done anything differently? Those kind of things. I want you to just reflect on it. Did I do this well? Could I have done this differently? That's what I want you guys to do. Normally we do a really cool activity with this and we do an ice cream sundae thing where you tell me how you want your ice cream sundae, and then you swap with somebody and somebody else makes your ice cream sundae exactly as it said, and if you didn't tell them, to put it in a bowl, they might put it on a plate. So just little things like that to keep in mind when you're creating your SOP. So that's your assignment for this week. Create me an SOP. I don't care what it's for. Um, if I had to create an SOP, it'd probably be on how to YouTube all of the best lectures ever because now I'm going to be YouTube famous. Anyway, I miss you guys so, so much. Lots and lots of love. Um, I hope everybody's safe and healthy at home. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you need something. If you're bored and you just want to talk, um, let me know. I'll be happy to set up a Zoom meet. We'll get together. Um, I kind of stopped doing the Zoom meets because nobody was showing up and I just I didn't want to waste my time. Um, so if you guys want to talk or hang out, let me know. Um, brisket is, so he's butchered. Um, so hopefully once these restrictions get lifted, we'll be able to have something this summer and get together. Um, I miss you guys so much. Um, I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're well. And hopefully I get to see you guys sooner rather than later. So um, take care. Let me know if you need anything, all right? Have a good week.